Okay, I think we'll get started. So today we're going to talk about the electric dipole, and in particular we'll calculate the formula for an electric dipole interacting with an ion. Now we're in the middle here of talking about uh, chemical bonding and molecules. So we've looked at Lewis structure and we've talked about electronegativity and bond polarity. And we're about ready to get going into the three-dimensional geometry of the molecule. And different molecules will have different charge distributions. And oftentimes the molecules will be polar, which means they have a dipole moment. So we should talk a little bit about dipoles. Then we'll definitely come back to this uh, very quickly after we talk about molecules, when we start talking about intermolecular forces. What we see today will be, uh, although not the most strictly rigorous theory for intermolecular forces, that does involve quantum mechanics, but un underlying it all is the electrostatic attraction, often of dipoles. And then we'll come back to it in uh, a little bit in the second course, Introduction to Physical Chemistry 2, and then back to it in Introduction to Physical Chemistry 3. So the, the dipoles will be pervasive uh, throughout a lot of our work in these introductory courses and beyond. Uh, very important physical objects. Now, a dipole is simply a positive and negative charge separated by a distance. And that's, that's what we call a, a real dipole. And this happens in molecules where you have one end of the molecule being par uh, p positive or partially positive anyway, and the other end being negative or partially negative. Now, there is something called an ideal dipole or point dipole. And what happens here is that you imagine a real dipole with its particular um, characteristics, how it would interact uh, with other objects, and then shrinking that down into a point such that it still keeps this directionality to it, uh, but the distance between the charges is zero, and that's called a point dipole or an ideal dipole. And we're going to drive some formulas for real dipoles, and then we're going to look at approximations, which is almost what we always do, and those approximations are really, uh, be they become rigorous formulas for the point dipole or the ideal dipole. All right, but let's start with this real dipole and see what's going on here. So we'll draw a picture, and our dipole distance will be A, and we'll have a positive Q charge and a negative Q of charge. And we'll imagine a spot right here in the middle, uh, a distance A over 2 uh, in either direction to the positive or negative charge. And we're going to see how this dipole interacts with an ion, a charged uh, or just some charged object, but let's say an ion, uh, some distance away, a distance r away from the center. So r will be the um, distance to the center. The distance from the positive end of the dipole to the ion, we'll call that r plus, and the distance from the negative end, we'll call that r minus. And this can be oriented Anyway, we're going to we're going to stay in two dimensions here. Turns out the formula that we derive will still have the uh, same functional form um, with distance as in three dimensions, but it'll be easier to see here in two dimensions. So the axes, the inter um, charge axes here for the dipole makes an angle theta with the radial component from the center to the charged uh, to the free charge over here and we can measure that angle uh, um, uh, then the uh, sorry the, the complementary angle pi minus theta is on uh, the measured from the negative going part of the charge axes with the radial component coming out from the center so these form two triangles, an upper triangle and a lower triangle. And unfortunately, they're not right triangles. And so we have to dig back in uh, the recesses of our trig in high school and remember the law of cosines in order to get the lengths here in terms of the angles and the distances. And so if you've forgotten the law of cosines, which we always tend to kind of forget the details of, but very easy to just look up 
And so we will employ the law of cosines here to get these distances. And here it is applied for this top triangle. And here it is for the bottom triangle. And notice the th angle theta here is pi minus, or the angle here is pi minus theta. But properties of cosine says this is just negative cosine of theta. And so this negative sign here will cancel then and give us a positive sign. And so as we might expect, these formula are very, very similar because of the symmetry here, and they just differ by the sign on this cosine term. All right, so now we have to figure out the force uh, that is um, between this charge and these dipoles. So we'll consider the force on the charge from the dipole. Now, of course, by Newton's third law, we have equal and opposite force on the dipole by the ion, but we'll focus here on the force that the dipole exhibits. So we use Coulomb's law, and we're going to write the magnitude. Right? We're going to have to draw a free body diagram and get the uh, directions as well. But uh, Coulomb's law is, uh, as we should remember here, just Q1, Q2 over R squared. In general, well, what's our R? For the case of uh, the positive end of the dipole, it's R plus, which we have here. And for the negative end of the dipole, uh, it's R minus. Now, we're setting ourselves up here. It seems like we're doing something a little silly here, but I'm pulling out an A squared and writing R as R over A. Uh, later, we're going to take the approximation where R is much bigger than A, and this will help us do that. So that's what we're just doing, setting up here. So that's why we see an R over A and an R over A here in these cases. All right, well, now we need to get the direction. So we have magnitude and direction. <laughs> and so there's if we draw the free body diagram, we have the F plus as a repulsive force. Oh, I've got a mistake here. F plus as a repulsive force. And then we have the F minus, uh, F minus as an attractive force. So coming back in this direction. Okay. And so it's going to have a slightly lower magnitude as drawn here. Right? It's going to depend on the angle, but just the specific of what we've drawn here, let's just look at the specifics of what we've drawn here. We'll have a slightly larger uh, length here and smaller length here. So according to the symmetry, I guess I should have wrote, written this up here. We won't go straight down. Our net will be a little bit off to the side. Okay, um, I'm gonna redraw this as well. <coughs> so these are the formula. They're a little bit complicated. Of course, you could definitely um, still think about them, work them out, they're not that complicated. But we are gonna make this approximation now, and we are going to say that uh, the distance R is much, much bigger than the distance A. So this ratio is much greater than 1. In that case, uh, the free body diagram, the lengths are going to be roughly the same. So if we are, let's just think about this physically, if this is a long distance away, there's not much of a difference, even if this is turned completely uh, to theta equals zero, if r is really big, then r plus a over two is about the same as r minus a over two. And so these are pretty close together, and thus uh, we have, um, essentially a, a, a cancellation of any left to right here, and we're uh, straight down on R. 
Now, <clears throat> and again, what I've drawn here, so I want to be careful here. It's maybe, maybe, a, maybe a mistake to draw just one case, but that's just for how we've drawn this here. So let's let, just to emphasize that. Let's let's say we were in a position like this. Right. Then our arrow our free body diagram would look like that. And we would effectively for far enough away, we would effectively see a neutral situation because the positive and negative charge would cancel each other and there's not a big enough difference in those distances. Now as we're closer, of course, that does matter. Okay, so as an approximation, uh, we can not worry too much about drawing this free body diagram. Uh, we can just say uh, that um, the well, we can we just not have to worry about it. Okay, so here we've got our full-blown formula. I'm going to put a little, I'm going to sort of use this notation to do this first step in the approximation. So we're only really worried about magnitude now, and so we can add the magnitudes. Now, um, that's what's going on up here. So this is a big mess, but here is the numerator, and then here is the denominator. So everything put together. So we have put this over a common denominator. So I've taken this bit here, multiplied up here, and I've taken this bit here, multiplied down there. And that's what's, that's what's here. Now, let's look at the numerator and uh, the denominator. In the case of the denominator, we are going to have this a squared out front. We're going to get a, this term is going to multiply this term when we multiply this out. And so we're going to have something of r over a to the fourth power. And then this term will multiply this one, and this term will multiply this one, and we'll have other multiplications going on. But the highest remaining power will be r over a3. And that's what this O representation means, is on the order of r to the 3. So the dominant factor here is going to be r over r over a to the fourth, and because r over a is much greater than one, that will completely dominate. And so the other terms, the terms of order r over r to the third, r over a to the third, are going to be negligible. And so uh, we can essentially ignore those, and we're left with this in our denominator. And so I'm going to use this notation now, just to sort of split hairs a little bit there and say we've now employed the approximation that we have uh, gotten rid of all the terms of order three or lower. Now, this big mess of a numerator, what's gonna happen here though, we've got a plus kqc and a minus kqc out in front of these. So this is gonna get distributed in, this will get distributed in, and they'll cancel. And then the same will happen here and here, right? Plus, minus, so those will cancel. But notice there is a sign change here. And so these will not cancel, but they'll actually add. So we'll have two of these. The one half will go away, and we're gonna get KC, uh, KQ, QC, R over A, cosine theta. Right? And so <clears throat> that's our numerator. There. Well, let's clean this up now. Uh, we've got those some A's we can cancel and some R's we can cancel. And this cleans all the way up. To a formula for the force from the dipole. And the big deal here is it drops off as R cubed. So 
we saw the Coulomb's law, which would be the interaction between, say, two ions, drops off as R squared. The interaction between an ion and a dipole drops off as R cubed. Uh, we can get the, we talked earlier about the potential energy and the force and their relationship. So the, um, uh, the force is the derivative of the potential energy or the potential energy is the um, integral of the force. So we're going to do, uh, we can get the potential energy by raising the power here to, it's r to the minus three, so now we would r to the minus two. We get a minus uh, and a two down here. And so we can get the potential energy. So that required some calculus. If you've had some calculus, uh, you'll see where that comes from. If not, um, just take that as the formula for the potential energy. All right, well, let's, uh, let's plot some things and see what these look like. So um, let's plot the, this net force as a function of distance. Well, it drops off very rapidly. Probably need to drops off as a 1 over x to the third type function. So this is uh, definitely, it's in what we call a shorter range force. Uh, we tend to call the ion-ion interaction, the, one, uh, the Coulomb's interaction, as a longer range force. Um, this is in a category of um, shorter range force, although it's kind of in between. And we'll see when we start looking at um, the other intermolecular forces, those are going to be even shorter range because they'll drop off even quicker. Perhaps more interesting is the net force as a function of angle. So I'm going to go 0 to 2 pi. And let's take a look at this. So this will have some value, right? So we're, we'll imagine we're stuck at a particular distance away and we're just gonna rotate this dipole, right? So we're gonna keep R the same and then we're just gonna rotate this. So we'll start off, cosine of zero is one. So we're gonna start off here at K Q Q C over R three. And then, uh, oh, times a. And this will behave like a cosine. Uh, so it'll be minus this value. At pi, and then 0 at pi over 2. look like that. Well, let's interpret this physically. This angle of zero, let's draw that picture. That's going to be like this. So that's an angle of zero. It's also an angle of 2 pi, because 2 pi is just all the way around. Um, angle of pi over 2, that's going to look like this. Now these are equal distance, so um, we're going to get uh, sort of the same 
profiles, so, so, so no net force. And then let's look at here. That's like that. Now we're going to get a net negative force and we would be attracted. So here we're going to get a net positive force and we'll be pushed in this direction. Here we'll get a net negative force and we'll be pushed in that or pulled in that direction right here. All right. Um, let me, let me say something a little bit more about this. Let's go back to the free body diagram for this. So if this is plus, this is minus. When, what this force is showing is this attractive force between these two. Um, so if I draw now the free body diagram for this, right, am I going to have any ultimately attractive or repulsive force here? That's what's being plotted. And the result is, well, this guy is going to be coming off in this direction, this guy pulling in this direction. So there is a net force, uh, but it's not attracting or pushing. Now, the reason we're not capturing it is we've made these approximations. And so we in making, and in fact, it's this first one, in making this first one, we've taken the uh, magnitudes to be, we've, we've sort of assumed we're far enough away that these arrows don't, uh, the lengths of these arrows are the same. Um, but what happens is we have a just a net force, so we would still accelerate, but we're um, not heading towards the dipole or away from the dipole and that's what these that's how we interpret these values here all right um, so that is the uh, electric dipole and uh, we will again see it often as we go through the course <laughs>